domains a little bit, and I'm not using the overhead for this one, but to get all the real details, if you go to the System Administrator's Guide, Chapter 8, we'll tell you everything you want to know about domains, how to use them. But there are six kind of domains, so I'm going to talk a little bit about these domains. The first one was that synonym, that's typically going to be for your statuses and things like that. These are reserved. You cannot add a new synonym domain. You can add values, but you can't add another domain that looks like that. Okay. We have the alphanumeric. An example might be the days of the week, or it might be five priority options, or it might be five kind of locations or colors or something like that. Your numeric range are just going to be a list of numbers that could work. A numeric range, 50 to 59, is a range less than 50, whatever you want to put in there. A table domain is when it goes back to an object table. So if we want a table domain to go to the purchase order table, then you have a list of all the purchase orders that are in there. And remember, what you see in that list would be dependent upon, it depends on how you code it, or how you do it in the application, but dependent upon the parameters that you've set. In other words, I only want to see the purchase orders for organization one, two, three. Okay. And the last is a crossover domain. This is a special kind where it goes out and brings a value from another record. Remember a lot of times when we would bring up a new record or a record, depending on what you put in somewhere, it will bring another the information from another record in there. So when you put in and you selected, you were on the purchase order and you selected the company, if there were other fields, it would pull those over in the crossover. So those are your six types of domains that you can use. And you can add values to any of these. You can even add a new one of any of these types. These are types. The only one you can't add a new one to is synonyms because they're reserved. So they're just a value list. That's all it is for a field that you have. And as I said, chapter 8 goes into all the board details. So you can read all of that. Is that kind of solidified a little bit better? Okay, good. Are we still taping? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> All right. Um, why don't we do a little bit on what you would do when you first go to a site? Everybody got this? This is on the first page of chapter 8. Customer decides on buying Maximo. Yay! <laughs> That's good. That means we, we've got something to do, we've got money coming in, and they're going to pay us to install it and to make some changes and customize it for them. So, first thing you're going to do is you're going to go out to that customer, and you may have to do this before they, you know, they even purchase it. Um, part of the, the things that you're going to have to ask, or somebody's going to have to ask, is what platform are they going to use? And if that has not been decided, they've got to decide, am I going to put this into a SQL Server, database, an Oracle database, SAP, etc. Alright? And once they figure that out, that may mean a different version of the software that they purchase. But let's assume that they know that. Are they going to want to do um, a completely separate installation or they do an LDAP or single sign-on? Whatever kind of environment they're going to put this on. So you got to kind of ask a lot of those server basic questions. All right, and I guess you could kind of pull these together and say that they're server issues. Questions. 
So we're still gathering requirements. So now they've told you what they want to do and they told you when they want to. So, so now we've got to look at um, kind of their timetable would be another thing that we need to get from them. This is all the, the information gathering, remember. This is still part of it. When are they thinking that they want to start doing this? When are they thinking that they want to implement it? All the wins. What's the timeline that they're looking at? And hopefully it'll be realistic and they won't say, yeah, we want 4,000 different things changed on here, but we want it next week. Okay? <laughs> and that's when you say, isn't going to happen. <laughs> but you need to kind of get that general timetable as to when are they going to plan on implementing this and when are they when will they go live, etc. So that's some more information that you need. So these are kind of some of the basics. So now we've kind of got this. Um, the other thing too might be are they going to purchase new hardware? Do they have hardware? Again, this might already have been taken care of. So now they said, yep, our timetable looks okay. We want you to come in, make our modifications, and bring the system up for us. Okay. So from an installation point of view, whoever's doing your installation needs to get the system up and running somewhere, whether it be in your environment, whether it's on their environment. Um, probably they're going to want to run it on their environment somewhere along the line because especially if you have to attach it into their other equipment. So we're at the point now where somebody's working on that end and now you have to understand their processes. What do they do? That would be the first thing that I would go through. And you're going to have to walk through how they do everything. And that's where some of these buzzwords come into play. How do you handle work orders? How do you